Hi friends, I'm very happy to see you here. I'm Uma Shankar Pandey and this is the Dr. USP channel. I host videos on media, communication, social theories and research on this channel. According to feminist theorists, gendered roles of masculinity and femininity are not natural dispositions. They are influenced by cultural forces of uh, role learning, gender stereotyping and socialization. Let us see an introduction to feminist theory, what you need to know in this video. Feminist epistemologies include situated knowledge, intersectionality, epistemic injustice and standpoint theory. Feminist theory has a number of strands including liberal feminism, radical feminism, postmodern feminism, intersectional feminism and ecofeminism. Feminist theory aims to understand and challenge gender inequality in various aspects of society. It emerged from the feminist movement that advocated for women's rights and interests. It covers a wide range of topics such as discrimination, objectification, oppression, patriarchy, stereotyping and epistemology. Feminist theory emerged in the late 19th and early 20th centuries as women began to challenge the traditional gender roles and patriarchal power structures. Since then, there has been a wide range of approaches including liberal feminism, radical feminism, Marxist feminism, postmodern feminism and intersectional feminism. The first wave of feminism emerged in the late 19th and early 20th centuries focusing primarily on women's voting and political rights. The second wave of feminism emerged in the 1960s and 1970s and focused on a broader range of issues including reproductive rights, workplace discrimination and sexual violence. The third wave of feminism emerged in the 1990s and continued to challenge gender inequality while also focusing on issues such as intersectionality, sexuality and gender identity. The fourth wave of feminism emerged in the early 2010s and has focused on issues such as online harassment, sexual assault on college campuses and the gender pay gap. Feminist theory challenges the notion that gender is a natural and fixed binary category, male or female, and instead views gender as a social construct that is shaped by cultural, historical and political factors. Feminist theory argues that patriarchal power structures exist in society which give men more power and privilege than women. Feminist theory recognizes that individuals have multiple social identities that intersect and interact with one another, such as gender, race, class and sexuality. Intersectionality is a way of understanding how different forms of oppression intersect and contribute to social inequality. A black woman may experience discrimination that is different from that experienced by a white woman or a black man. Feminist theory emphasizes the importance of giving women and other marginalized groups agency and a voice in society. It recognizes that individuals have different experiences and perspectives and that their voices and perspectives are valuable in shaping society. Feminist theory has had a significant impact on media and communication field as well. Feminist theory has challenged gender stereotypes that have historically been perpetuated in media, such as the damsel in distress trope for example, or the portrayal of women as passive objects of male desire. Feminist theory has also promoted greater representation of women and other marginalized groups in media. It has also examined the impact of media on gender roles and norms. Feminist standpoint theory argues that knowledge is socially situated 
and that women or other marginalized groups have a unique and valuable insight into social reality that is often ignored or distorted by dominant groups. It emerged from Marxist theory and was developed by feminist scholars such as Dorothy Smith, Nancy Hartsock, Patricia Hill Collins and Donna Haraway. Feminist epistemologies are philosophical perspectives that focus on understanding how gender and power dynamics shape our knowledge and understanding of the world. They challenge traditional theories of knowledge which have often excluded or marginalized the experiences and perspectives of women and other marginalized groups. Feminist epistemologies seek to expose the ways in which knowledge production and dissemination are influenced by social and cultural factors such as gender, race, class and sexuality. They highlight the importance of diversity and inclusivity in knowledge creation and the need to recognize and value the perspectives and experiences of marginalized groups. Epistemic oppression is a term that describes a situation where some groups are systematically excluded or silenced from participating in knowledge production and dissemination. Epistemic oppression can take different forms such as testimonial injustice when someone's credibility or authority as a knower is unfairly undermined or dismissed because of their social identity, for example, gender. Epistemic agency is a concept that refers to one's ability and willingness to take charge of one's own learning and knowledge production. It involves being aware of one's epistemic goals, strategies, resources, challenges and opportunities. Epistemic agency also implies having a critical attitude towards existing knowledge and being open to new perspectives and evidence. Liberal feminists believe that women should have the same legal rights and opportunities as men and that gender should not be a barrier to individual achievement. Ecofeminists argue that the patriarchal structures that underlie gender inequality are also responsible for environmental destruction and that the exploitation of women and environment are interconnected. Feminist postmodernism challenges the universal and objective claims of traditional epistemology and emphasizes the plurality and diversity of ways of knowing. Feminist empiricism criticizes the biases and limitations of conventional scientific methods and proposes ways to make science more inclusive, rigorous and socially responsible. In addition to their focus on economic structures, Marxist feminists also emphasize the importance of intersectionality in understanding the ways that different forms of oppression intersect and reinforce one another. They argue that race, class, gender and other social categories cannot be understood separately from one another. We now discuss some seminal work. Julia Kristeva's contributions to feminist theory is her theory of abjection. The abject is that which is excluded from the symbolic order and the boundaries of the self and is associated with the maternal, the feminine and the bodily. Kristeva argued that the fear and disgust that are often directed towards the abject reflect a deeper fear of the instability and ambiguity of human identity. Simone de Beauvoir's statement, one is not born, one becomes a woman, asserts that gender is not something that is biologically determined, but rather something that is socially constructed. This view became foundational to gender theory in the 1970s which sought to explore the ways in which gender organizes the constitution and shape of femininity and masculinity. Juliet Mitchell's Psychoanalysis and Feminism in 1974 was path-breaking. 
she argued that traditional psychoanalytic theories were deeply gendered and reflected the patriarchal assumptions of the societies in which they were developed. She contended that psychoanalysis could be used to understand the ways in which gender identity is constructed. Jessica Benjamin's book, The Bonds of Love, Psychoanalysis, Feminism and the Problem of Domination in 1988 was a significant contribution to feminist theory as it offered a new way of understanding the dynamics of power and domination in relationships and proposed a framework for developing more equitable and respectful forms of human interaction. One of Judith Butler's most significant contributions to feminist theory is a theory of gender performativity. In her book Gender Trouble in 1990, Butler argues that gender is not an inherent biological trait but rather a social construct that is constantly being performed and reproduced through cultural practices and discourses. Gender is thus a performative act rather than a fixed identity. Thanks for staying along friends. As always, it was a delight having you here. I'll be back with another video very soon. Till then, have a great time.